If you don't know what your strengths are, if you don't know what you really care about, if you don't know what you're really good at, you're going to be dropping balls all over the place and you'll be hating yourself and thinking something is wrong with you. But the whole time you had strengths and weaknesses, but you hadn't sorted them into two different boxes. And that's why I did the work of finding a resource to help you. Sis, your lack of self-trust is holding you back. And we have to work on rebuilding your self-trust because you know, you know that you were made for so much more than what you're currently living in. And you're asking everyone what you should do. You're watching so many videos. You're looking down on your own ideas because you think, who's going to buy from me? Who's going to watch me? Who's going to listen to me? And the reason is because you do not have self-trust. And I'm not even saying that to judge you or anything because I was literally you. That's why I know what's happening. Your self-trust has been broken. You've made promises to yourself that you haven't followed through on. And now you're in a place where you're like, I don't trust myself. I don't trust myself to execute. You're thinking, oh, what if people see me at the beginning and they laugh at me because I haven't succeeded yet? There's so many thoughts that run through our heads right before we birth what God has planned for us to birth. But all of that head noise and today because in today's video i'm going to share seven secrets seven things that i did that i don't think a lot of people are talking about that help me build self-trust so that you can rebuild your self-trust and become the woman you know you were created to be the first thing you need is to get clear on your personal why i didn't just become a confident faith-filled person overnight right i read a lot of books listened to a lot of podcasts wait a second let me grab one of the books right here on my desk One of the books that changed my life is this one, Start With Why. It's basically saying you have to be really, really clear and honest with yourself about your personal why. Why do you want to launch a business? Why do you want to make six figures? Why do you want new friends? Why do you want to be healthy? You have to be clear on your real why. Do you want to spend more time with your kids? Or do you want to travel the world? Or do you just want to have excess money so that you can live in abundance even after paying your bills and investing? What is your why? And you have to tell yourself the truth because your why is different from my why. If your why is because you want to spend more time with your kids, that would inform your decisions because when someone comes to you with an opportunity that takes you away from your kids, it's very easy to say no. And if your why is to make the most amount of money and you have to be honest with yourself about that, when people come or opportunities come that you know would not put money in your bank account, it's easy to say no. Like setting boundaries is a difficult thing. And if we're not honest with ourselves about why we're doing the things we're doing, then we're all over the place. We say yes to everything. We say no to the wrong things. And then after the fact, we begin to feel bad about ourselves. Why did I accept that invitation? Why did I get on that call? Why did I go to that place? It doesn't sit right with you because you didn't think about your why before you took the action. Now you've taken the action and you hate yourself for it and you feel bad, you feel regret, you feel guilt. And all of those feelings break our self-trust, right? Because you start to think to yourself, well, I made that one bad decision. Can I even trust myself to make decisions anymore. But when you start with why, you find yourself making more decisions that align with what your why really is. Number two is to set clear goals. And the reason why this is number two is because it flows directly from finding your why. When you become sure of where exactly you're trying to go, what exactly you're trying to do, it makes it easy to set goals that actually align with what it is you're trying to achieve. I know we're living in an era where there's so much talk about manifesting and just sitting down and just visualizing what we want and it will just come, but that's not really how it works. I'm all for having a vision for your life. The Bible even says, write your vision and make it plain. I'm all for all those things, but we have to turn our visions into clear, actionable goals. There's a method called the SMART goal method, S-M-A-R-T. If you want me to talk more about that, let me know in the comment section. But basically it means you need to set goals with clear deadlines and clear reasons And you need to have action steps that can actually lead to you achieving those goals. That way, the more of your goals that you hit, the more confident you become and the more you would begin to trust yourself. Number three is the most important one. Get to know yourself. Can you trust someone who you don't even know? Think about it. Let that sit with you for a second. There's a reason why we don't trust strangers. There's a reason why we don't trust people who we just met. But here's the wild thing. A lot of us 
have not taken the time to get to know who we are. We don't know who God created us to be. Who are you? What are your strengths? What do you enjoy? What do you actually care about? What don't you care about? Because some of us don't care about certain things. I know there are women who watch this channel who are like, I really don't care about making six figures. I just want enough money to quit my job. Or I really don't care about filling the blank. I just want this. And that's okay. You need to know what you care about as a human being. What are your strengths? What can you do? What can you not do? What have your friends told you that you're so good at? What have your family members told you that you're so good at? You need to sit with yourself for a second. And I really don't understand how we think we can build self-trust when we don't even know ourselves. Like we're walking around as women in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s with zero self-awareness. That's dangerous. If you don't know what your strengths are, if you don't know what you really care about, if you don't know what you're really good at, you're going to be dropping balls all over the place and you'll be hating yourself and thinking something is wrong with you. But the whole time, you had strengths and weaknesses, but you hadn't sorted them into two different boxes. Because if you're busy trying to do things that align with your weaknesses, you would be failing at them and thinking that something is wrong with you. Meanwhile, there are things that align with your strengths that you're not even doing. And you don't even know that because you haven't sat down to get to know yourself. Usually when I make a point as strong as this, I don't like to leave you hanging. And that's why I did the work of finding a resource to help you write for self-discovery. It is a class by Yasmin Cheyenne and it is on Skillshare, who've been kind enough to sponsor this video. If you don't already know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an amazing platform with thousands of classes from writing for self-discovery like this one, all the way to video editing and managing your money. It has all of the things. And the teachers on Skillshare are incredible people who have done what you want to do. And thanks to this partnership, the first 500 people, yes, you heard that right, I only have 500 spots this time. The first 500 people to use my link below will gain access to Skillshare's best offer. 30 days free, which is cool, but on top of that, you also get 40% off your first year of Skillshare membership. But it's only available to 500 people. So if I were you, I would grab my spot below. So thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Number four, after taking the class on Skillshare and getting to know yourself, you will become really clear on what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And why is this important? So that we can know the things that we should be doing and the things that we should be outsourcing because we cannot do it all. You might be good at making purses for your business, but if you're bad at marketing, honey, outsource it. There's no reason why you should be trying to do it all. We need other people. You're not superwoman, you're just a woman. And the reason why this is important for building self-trust is because if you keep ignoring your strengths and fighting with your weaknesses, you will be losing. And then you think you're the problem, but you're not. You're just doing the wrong things. Number five is to dodge document your wins. Write it down. Every single time you achieve something that you're so proud of, write it down in the same book. So on days when the enemy tries to tell you that you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't trust yourself, you're not good at anything, blah, 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 whatever those voices say to you, you can pull out a book of facts. And I really don't believe in pointless affirmations, but that's a story for another day. But I believe in truth. You believe it because you know it's the truth. Like if you stand in a mirror and say, I'm a butterfly, I'm a butterfly, like your brain knows you're not a butterfly. But if you look at a book that's full of things you've actually done and you've actually accomplished in your life, it will keep reminding you that you're that girl because you are. Even on your worst days, you're still loved by God and you're still made for purpose. And I want you to be able to remind yourself of that so you can build self-trust. And one of the ways is by keeping an I did that log. Literally a book, right? I did that on the cover and document your wins. Number six is to learn a lesson from every single mistake. Yes, we're gonna drop balls. Yes, we're gonna fail sometimes. But you know what chips away at our self-trust? When we keep repeating the same mistake over and over and over again. So we want to make sure we're catching ourselves so that we can make better mistakes. Like it's okay to make mistakes, but it's not really okay to keep making the same mistake. Like make new mistakes, right? If 
you're making mistakes, it's proof that you're trying. But you need to be making new mistakes. That way you're like, oh, okay, this is new. I haven't done this before. I'm slipping, I'm falling. Well, I'm learning to walk, so I'll fall sometimes and that's fine. When you learn from your mistakes and you make new and better mistakes, your confidence grows, your self-trust grows. And even when you're faced with new challenges, you know that even if you fall, you can get up because you've made that mistake in the past and you no longer make it today. And number seven is to try your possible best to keep the promises that you make to yourself. You wouldn't trust a person who keeps breaking their promises. So you wouldn't trust yourself if you keep saying, I'm going to show up today and you don't. I'm going to make that video and you don't. I'm going to start that podcast and you don't. These things actually silently chip away at our confidence. So whenever I tell you, please show up, I'm not just saying it because it impacts your finances, it impacts your well-being, but it also impacts your self-trust. So girl, I don't know what your history is. I don't know who said things to you to make you feel small, to break your confidence, to make you lose trust in yourself. But one thing I'm always going to do with this platform is pour into you until you feel whole enough to do all that God has called you to do. And in fact, let me say a quick prayer before we leave this video. Father God, I thank you for your daughter. I thank you for how far you've brought her. I thank you for even letting her see this video all the way to this point because I know it wasn't by accident. Father God, every voice in her head constantly telling her she's not enough, she can never amount to anything, she's never going to do anything significant. I silence such voices right now in the name of Jesus. The Bible says at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is God. He is God over your life. Father God, we're holding on to you as the author and finisher of our faith, O oh God. And I commit your daughter into your hands, O oh God, that even as she goes about her day, even as she goes about her week, that you fill her mind with thoughts of peace, thoughts of goodness, thoughts of joy, thoughts to bring her to an expected end, O oh God. Father, because your word says you haven't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Father, I ask that a sound mind will become a reality from today going forward, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, the mindset, the faith, the emotions necessary sorry for her to be all that you've called her to be in this life. I ask that you develop in her, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we know you love us, we know you care about us, and we know you have answered. For in Jesus' mighty name I've prayed. Amen. Remember that I'm rooting for you, so please do not stop rooting for yourself. And until next time, please take care.